You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with mini dental implants. According to my first guest, nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. With us, we have an expert on the topic. Uh, he is uh, Seattle's go-to uh, dentist when you want to replace your missing teeth with, uh, with mini dental implants. With us, we have Dr. Kajano. Dr. Kajano, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. It's great to be here. All right, now I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll get to those. Now, for people that don't know your practice, who's your typical patient and what are the different uh, services you offer? You know, Randy, I would have to say there is no typical patient. We see patients from all over Seattle and all over King County. I have patients that will drive, you know, an hour and a half to come to our office for a number of different reasons. We do oral conscious sedation to help sedate patients. You say people love that. Well, I've, I had a patient just within a couple months ago said at the end of his appointment after being sedated as we're helping him get uh, out of the office, he said, Oral conscious sedation is the best. <laughs> it's a great thing. There's an amnesic effect. You don't really remember what happened during the appointment as far as the dentistry goes. So it gives you a sense of confidence. I accomplished all this and I didn't feel anything. I didn't remember anything. It was just a great experience. You say you can do years worth of dentistry in, one, in, in a couple of appointments. What does that mean? Well, you can, you know, I have patients. You say there's what's a typical patient. We, our typical patient, if we were to classify somebody, is someone that hasn't been to the dentist for a long time for a litany of different reasons. They had a bad experience or they've had numerous bad experiences as a child and all the way through adulthood. We have patients that for financial reasons haven't been to the dentist in a long time and now they can finally afford, the kids are out of the house, uh, bills are paid off, they can take care of themselves. Maybe a wife that says, honey, you need to go get this done for yourself, you deserve it. They'll come into our office, I will bring them in my private office, talk to them about what their concerns are what they're looking for and what their desires are. I have patients that'll say, you know, I can't chew. I have toothaches. I, I, I just want to be out of pain. I want to be able to eat again. I have other patients that say, you know, I'm in sales. I need to get my smile better. I need to, to be able to smile. I've always wanted to smile, but I can't. I'll have men that have these big mustaches and beards. Yeah. You can't even find their mouths. <laughs> and once we fix their smile, what do you know in the next picture? There is no beard. There is, and they're, 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 the smile, even when they're talking, their eyes light up. I, I haven't been able to smile for 25 years, 30 years. Wow. Sometimes we have patients that have no, they have no muscles to smile because they were so embarrassed for so many years. And all of a sudden, they're learning how to smile again. You look at their first picture after we did this, their case, and they're barely smiling. They don't really know how to smile. And then a year or two down the road, they've developed those muscles. They've developed the, the look in their eyes. Their eyes light up when they see this stuff. It's really quite amazing. Now, the, the, the dental implant crowd, the mini implant crowd, yeah. who, who's that type of patient? Who you know, sees you from It that? can be someone that's missing one tooth, multiple teeth, or headed towards losing all their teeth. Someone that's had dentures for a number of years and that are looking for something. They're so embarrassed. Their teeth fall out when they're talking. Uh, they can't laugh. They're afraid to go to lunch with friends because there might not be something on the menu that they can kind of mush together. Somebody, you know, when somebody says, I, I, I'm able to eat salads again. It's like, who would think that you couldn't eat a salad? You know? So denture wearers have a tough time eating they have a, even they salads? Have, they have a very tough time eating so many things that we don't even think about. We, so, we take it for granted. So when, you say, when we say at the top of the show, like no more dentures, no more traditional dentures, you yeah, believe that? I believe that. You know, uh, uh, with the, especially with mini dental implants nowadays, I, I see patients that have been told uh, just recently by another dentist, oh, there's not enough bone or you need multiple grafts. You need all these different things to get some kind of bone to place dentures in. But with mini dental implants, we can find the bone in most cases. You know, there, uh, there's always going to be a case or two out there that, that doesn't fit our scope. But nowadays with the technology, with 3D scan x-rays, uh, uh, we, we can find the bone. And for mini dental implants, we need very little width of bone, which is usually what many people don't have. Patients that have had dentures for 30 years and, and have had that, that goo, uh, patients hate that goo and the stuff uh, to hold your teeth in place. We'll see you, place the implants, attach them to your denture, and then you can chew in one day, usually like one hour. Is this true though that people can walk in on the day of the procedure with no teeth, walk out with teeth that don't come in and out? Absolutely. Really? Very true. Now there's regular implants and mini implants. What's the difference? They're, they're, and they're, do the mini implants work? I've had some dentists that are skeptical about many, this. Many dentists can be. You know, when they say they're too small. When something comes out, just like traditional larger diameter implants, when they came out 25, 30 years ago, 
people were like, oh, this isn't going to work. They do work. There was a 10-year study of over 6,000 mini dental implants done by Dr. Todd Shadkin, and the success rates were comparable to traditional dental implants. They're FDA approved. They're recommended for all types of procedures, especially for locking in dentures. The upsides of mini dental implants, there's, there's five, they're five times less. They're less invasive. There's less discomfort. There's less healing time, less office visits, and everybody's favorite, they're less than half the cost of traditional implants. And they work, so that's good. They work. So is this the hottest, newest thing? I think, I think it's great because it's an affordable and predictable option for patients. Okay, good. Now, where you are in Seattle, are there a lot of people like missing huh. like an upper or lower denture? Like they have an upper or lower denture? You know what's so interesting, Randy? When, when you don't have dental problems, you don't know what they are. As a dentist, I'm fortunate enough to know that there are so many people out there. You know, Safeco Field, we have Safeco Field in Seattle, and it holds about 45, 50,000 people. You could probably fill that up 10 times with the people that have dentures and that are uncomfortable. That, that the uh, denture adhesive business is a billion dollar industry, and it's not that way because it tastes good. It's because people need something to keep their teeth in their mouth. And, and so if there's so many people out there wearing dentures, as you say, right, tens of thousands, why aren't they all doing it? Why aren't they all coming in to get them locked in these the simple answer, I think, is that when you have dentures, you've had your teeth taken out, it's a, day of, it's a day of discomfort, but it's also a day of relief for these people. They, they don't have to go to the, they feel they don't have to go to the dentist anymore. Their dental problems are solved. That's number one. And they haven't been to the dentist for a long time. And if they go, once they have their dentures, they don't have to go to the dentist for a long time unless they maybe have a sore spot. And if you have a sore spot on a denture, even the, doc, the dentist doesn't want to see you because they know that they're just transferring the sore spot. They can relieve that sore spot, but you're going to get another one somewhere else. And to have dentures is a, is a very difficult thing. They, 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 they self-diagnose. They think they're, they're too old. How old can you be to do you this? You know, I have patients. I've, I've placed many dental implants in 90-year-olds. Really? Very simple procedure. Why would procedure. a 90-year-old want to do this? Well, why wouldn't a 90-year-old want to do it? Why wouldn't you want to be able to chew? Why wouldn't you want to be able to smile? Okay. Right. Okay. It's incredible. It, you know, and to, be, to have that satisfaction, I have a, just an example. I have this wonderful couple, Randy, 93-year-old husband, 89-year-old wife. A year ago, she was walking around. They live in an assisted living care where they have a, 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 a cafeteria where everybody eats. They get together all the time. She falls down. She broke her own natural teeth, three or four natural teeth in the front. She was so embarrassed, she wouldn't go down to the cafeteria to eat. She didn't want her friends to see her without teeth. They have a little kitchen in their room, and so she would make all her meals in her room. She got to me. We, we extra had to extract the, the broken teeth, placed the mini dental implants, got her her bridge. She's back smiling. She's back eating with everybody, going to all the uh, events they have at, the, uh, at, at, her, at her place of residence. And to see her... When, when, we, when we finally give her the mirror and to see her smile again, it's like, you know, you see these, her eyes light up and like all those things that she was doing with her friends, she stopped doing, now she's back at it. Her husband, another example, 93-year-old, okay. Randy, 93-year-old man. Who would even know that there was a, 50 years ago, there wouldn't be a 93-year-old man, right? Yeah, but yeah. now 93, this guy, he walks to the office, he, you know, I always see him. I see him when I walk out for lunchtime. I'll see him on the streets. He's a, he's a very outgoing Gregorius. He was a war veteran of the war, the, you know, World War II, the Pacific War, fought, you know, for our country. He has all these different things going on, and he's still 93 and healthy. He broke, he broke some teeth on the right side of his jaw, and, and this guy did not want dentures. So we place him in any dental implants, put the teeth in his mouth. He's 93, functioning, smiling, happy as a clam. So they could eat whatever they want? Eats whatever. Or they have to be careful. Eats whatever he wants. I mean, yeah. you can bite something with your front teeth like a raw he, carrot? He chooses anybody. I had a patient the other day. We did a full bridge on his upper arch, supported by mini dental implants. When we called to see how he was doing a week, well, we called a day later. He was doing fine. A week later, we asked him, how are you able to chew and everything? He said he feels like he could chew a tree. So I see, I, I see patients that have been told by other offices that they, they don't have enough bone. Yeah, but isn't it true, though, that if you've been wearing a denture like 10 or 12 years, you don't have enough bone to do this? That's not true. Okay. You, you, with mini dental implants, you don't need the same amount of bone. If you've been told that you don't, need, that you don't have enough bone, I saw somebody even two weeks ago who came to me and said, you know, I heard, I heard you talking about mini dental implants. I went to my last dentist and he said I don't have enough bone. And I said, it's very true, you don't have enough bone for those wider traditional implants, but you have plenty of bone for mini dental implants. It, it happens all the time.
Is that right? So a lot of people now, when 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 they go in, because this is a most of these people are getting sedation. Is that right? Because this is a fearful crowd. A lot of their team. A lot of our patients do sedation. We have sedation for everybody. Most times, I'll even recommend to patients if we're if we're going to be doing a large case, I do oral conscious sedation. It's a fantastic way for us to take care of patients and to take care of their problems. You basically get to snooze while we do all the work. You wake up, and uh, you you're like you don't remember anything about the dental appointment. You might remember us telling you to open your mouth, something like that. But patients are they're just fantastic. I had somebody just last week as he was leaving after his uh, oral conscious sedation, as you know, as we're helping him get out of the office, he's like, Doc, tell all your patients oral conscious sedation is the only way to go with dental work. So it just makes it very easy. Oh, it makes it awesome. So there's no more excuses. There are no more excuses, Randy. Yeah, but what if you have bad gums, like loose teeth, bad gums, and, and you maybe know that you're headed to dentures. Are those, I mean, will the implants stay even with people with bad gums? Those are perfect candidates. We see those people all the time. Absolutely, Randy, those are the best. I had a woman come in two weeks ago. She just came back from her dentist and said to me that I don't want to go through this anymore. She goes, I've had, I brush, I floss, I have a sonic air, I have an oral B, I have a water pick. I do everything possible without living, having some time to live my life uh, to try and take care of my gums, but I've always had dental problems. The dent, last dentist said, you need two more root canals and you need two more crowns. And she said, I am done with it. I bought this guy a boat and a house, jokingly. <laughs> and uh, I just want, I want to get rid of these problems. And, uh, and you know, one of the side things that I told her is that this periodontal disease that she has is really bringing her system down. Her body is fighting this bacterial infection constantly. And for many of my patients, once we take care of that problem by removing their teeth and getting them dental implants, they will generally tell me that they have more energy. And I, I tell them it's because your body has been fighting this problem for so long that you, it's like putting the straw on the camel's back one by one by one. And now once we've taken care of that problem, she has beautiful teeth. She can smile. She knows that her lower teeth are headed in the same direction. They're actually pretty good for right now. Now she has a full set of teeth. She can eat whatever she wants. Everything is secured by implants. And she's smiling and chewing and having, having a great quality of life. So they're never left without teeth. Like if somebody comes in without no. teeth. No, you'll have teeth. You'll never leave my office without teeth. So when it's done, though, how soon can they eat like right after the procedure? I have patients, when we secure a denture to many dental implants, that night, they're eating, they're chewing their food, they're eating their steak, they're eating a, a carrot, they're having salad, the simple things in life. You know, we, all, we, also, we always think about dentistry as teeth, but it's way more than teeth, Randy. It's the first process of digestion. If you cannot chew your food properly, you cannot assimilate your food properly. If you can't assimilate your food properly, you're not going to get the proper nutrients. So denture wares aren't really chewing. They're, you know, like just uh, rubbing it's their like food? a cow. Yeah, it's just you. You have about uh, well, you're just kind of mashing food together, and you're not really shredding the thing so you can absorb it properly. Now I know denture wares, at least a couple. They never uh, complain. Oh, they're not going to complain to you. I hear the complaints all the time, Randy, and it's because. They, they don't want you, they're embarrassed of their, their mouth, they're embarrassed that they can't chew, they're embarrassed that they can't smile, they can't, they're afraid if they go to a ball game and they really cheer for somebody that their teeth are gonna fly out of their mouth. There was a, a, a video that most everybody's probably seen of the, I think it was like a Japanese emperor or premier or something and he's talking and all of a sudden his teeth fly yes, out of his mouth. Yes. <laughs> it's funny to everybody else, but not to him, it's I'm, not, I'm No, sure. it's not to yeah. him. And it's, it, who, who would want to feel that way and be amongst friends and, and not be able to uh, go to a sandwich shop and eat a sandwich uh, or think about exactly what you have to eat or God forbid you get something stuck underneath your denture, you excuse yourself to go to the restroom, got to wash the food out of your teeth and come back and say, oh, you know, uh, it, it's just a horrible, it's a horrible you thing. You know, 50s, 60s, early 70s, very young today. Oh, are totally. They? So, especially these people dating. And if you're wearing a denture and you're dating, it's got to be probably rough, right? Uh, I hear it all the time. You know, I have a patient... Uh, that, uh, that, that, that told me exactly the same thing. When he first came to me, he was wearing, uh, well, when he, when he first came to our office, he couldn't smile, he had, he had no teeth, he, uh, he, he couldn't chew properly, and he had such a severe gag reflex that we couldn't even take impressions on him without sedating him. This was a really tough case. And then I had concerns that he was gonna be able to tolerate the teeth and everything. But he hung in there, we hung in there, and he's about 65 or so, he hasn't been married for a while. He would never even think about dating with 
his broken down teeth. He goes out on, on he, he's on Match.com match now. He has dates. He talks about how we've changed his entire life. <laughs> we've given this man, he's a wonderfully nice fellow, but who would want to date him with the way his teeth looked before? It's amazing now. And it, to bring that quality of life to someone, not just chewing, but it's actual real, you know, to have someone, to have a companion in life, it's so important. And, and, and he was deprived of it, and now he, he's out there. Interesting. We're going to take a quick break. We come back more about the process, what they can expect when they go in for the consultation, and more about the process. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. I'm very happy. You know, like I told Mark, it's, uh, it's really changed my life. You know, I'm able to go out with girls again. You know, it's just uh, made a world of difference. Haven't been dating for about eight years, and I want to get back into it. And I've met a couple of really, really nice girls, and I know if I looked like what I did before, it wouldn't, you know, you know, it wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have wanted to do it either. I wouldn't have tried. Okay, everything had to be just right, and I think we're both happy with the results, both of us, him and me. He's, he's a good guy, I guess. We've just gotten to be kind of friends, too, you know. I've been, I've dealt with very good tennis, but Mark's just super and uh, just uh, knows how to treat you, I guess, or knows how to work with you and, and get both of you get the results you want. If you want a really, really good experience, it's a great place to go. You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants, mini dental implants. According to my first guest, nobody should be wearing or has to wear a loose fitting denture anymore. With us, uh, we have Dr. Cajato. Okay, so the, the typical pay, doesn't matter how old you are. No. You say 90 year old, you've done 93 I've done, year old? I've done, I've worked on 90, 93 year old. So in your office, I, I guess how it's normally done is uh, you go to two or three places. You go to one person, one dentist or specialist that does the surgery. Then you go to another dentist that puts the teeth on top. And then maybe even another place for the imaging. You do it all right there. Right. Is that right? That's, that's absolutely okay. correct. Um, when we decide to, to begin, when, when a patient decides they want to go ahead with treatment, we take our initial impressions, we have our scan for our x-rays, and uh, we do the whole process in our office. And I am the only dentist in my office. You're the only person. I am the only person that you will come in contact with as far as dentistry. We have other staff, but I am the dentist that does the surgery, the placement of the implants, and the restorative aspect, getting you teeth. Now, now you're like a cosmetic dentist, too. Right? Oh, of course. I mean, you're Randy. big on cosmetics. We have incredible cases of, of uh, cosmetic dentistry where we've changed and transformed. That's, that's really the, the beginning of all this for me, uh, was transforming lives of patients with teeth. And as we talked about how dentistry has progressed, we can now transform lives with patients that don't have teeth. We have the, 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 the founding of zirconium, which is a porcelain-like material which looks like natural teeth and is strong enough to get rid of the metal frameworks, the acrylic palettes, all these different things make cosmetic dentures something that we can all have nowadays. Randy, let me show you some examples all right. of, of some patients that I've treated. Now, this first patient, here's a patient that came to us about a year ago. She had headaches. She had she wouldn't smile. Her smile wasn't in the greatest shape. She was headed to dentures. She had partial dentures, which she couldn't wear. And uh, the only reason she wore the upper one is it kind of replaced one of her front missing teeth. I saw her. I told her, we can fix that. We can fix it very simply, very quickly with mini dental implants. We first saw her. Her concern was, like I said, being able to chew. We got all of her back teeth in place. The next thing you know, she was so happy with that, she said, what can you do about my front teeth? Transform that completely. And now, Randy, look at that. She's, she's able to smile. Very and that's nice. just an early smile. You should see her nowadays because she, her lips, have, she realizes that she can smile. She gets compliments on her smile. And that's the first thing that she does when she walks in the room is she smiles. And when you say they have to learn to smile again, oh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. You know, a lot of patients, Randy, when they, when they, if they've had dark teeth, they've had missing teeth, they've had uh, crooked teeth, they learn not to smile. 
You know, uh, they, patients tell me I've smiled for years with my hand in my mouth. You'll see guys with real bushy beards that you don't even know they have a mouth um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they don't have, they don't smile and they don't have the muscles for smiling, just like any other part of your body. If you don't, if you don't exercise it, you're going to lose those muscles. You lose those facial muscles when you don't smile. It's beautiful. It's wonderful to see patients. Here's another case you can see. This woman here, she had uh, all of her existing teeth. So this is her smiling. Yes, she was missing. That's the best you were able to get. That's the best. And she just, she would smile uh, only, it, it, that's as big as she could get. She was missing some back teeth. Things started shifting around and started wearing her front teeth. She came to me, she wanted to be able to fix, she wanted to fix her mouth. She wanted to be able to smile. Her big thing was smiling. Once we, we got her fixed in just a few short appointments, she could smile again. And then she came back to me, she said, you know, I've been, I didn't realize that I wasn't chewing as my food as, as well as I could. I can eat things that I couldn't eat before. And it's all because she came in for one thing, and of course, we corrected both things. Here's another patient, Randy, right. that would have been headed to dentures. She came in a while back and wanted to be able to chew. She wanted to get rid of the problems that she had in her mouth, and she wanted to be able to smile. She left our office, and she learned how to smile. Very nice. It's incredible. You know, it's incredible the things that we can do for patients. But more significantly, it's incredible the, the compliments that we get from patients that we've actually transformed their lives. I never would have believed when I went into dental school that I could do things like this. But, but you're a dentist. Right. Of course you think the smile is probably the most important thing. Well, you know, research shows like uh, 95, you know, about 95% of your body is covered up by your clothes, everything else. And it's the eyes and the smiles. Everybody All knows. Right. The eyes are the window to the soul. The smile is the opportunity for you to, to engage with somebody. You're walking down the street. You walk past somebody. You smile. They don't smile back at you. What do you think? You think, oh, what a grump. I mean, or a it's bad not, mood it's, or something. It's a, yeah, yeah. it's a bad mood. It's a beautiful day. Why aren't they smiling? Well, they may not be able to smile. They could be a grump, but they may not have the teeth, and they may not want, want to be able to smile. You know, and it's really amazing to be able to get that person to smile. You know, in the history of our television and, and our society, if you want to make somebody look poor, you want to make look, somebody look bad, you black out a tooth. Halloween, what do, what do kids do? They, they black out teeth, they wear those uh, hillbilly teeth, you know? Yeah, yeah, Make yeah. people laugh, ha, ha, ha. But there's a reality for some people. So people judge them, you think? Totally, well, all the do. time. People do judge you. You know, uh, uh, research has shown uh, in, in, in sales, sales people that have a happy smile, a nice smile, they will sell more than pay people that don't have that smile. It's just a natural affinity. Are there that many people that don't, like in Seattle, when you're walking around, you're a desk, could you tell who's hiding their smile, who's not? Yeah, for the most part, you can tell that. It's, it's uh, you know, and, and again, when you have a smile, you don't know what it's like to not have a smile and to be able to give somebody that smile. I, I, I see people all the time that uh, they come to me because they don't want to be judged. I take a non-judgmental approach to patients. If your smile isn't what you want, we can figure out a way to make so it So no matter better. how broken down your mouth, mm, no, we chances can, are you can give them a full arch of teeth, yeah, we'll upper have, and lower. We can have you smiling, for sure. Now we're short on time. Wait, but, let me just tell you about my dad, Randy. Okay, my dad okay. passed away about four years ago. He was 92 years old when he passed away. I, I, my, I treated my dad at, at, when I was out of, after I was out of dental school, but before, my dad spent a lot of money on his teeth. He had horrible, horrible teeth. He was born two years before the Depression. Okay, worked hard as a kid, worked hard as an adult. He, uh, by the time I saw him, he had already had his teeth fixed. He was missing teeth. He had these old metal partials that he never wore. They were always on the counter. Okay, when I got out of dental school, I, I said, okay, dad, I'm going to fix you up. We fixed him up once. His teeth were so bad that he broke those down. Fixed him up a second time with crowns and bridges and all this other stuff. And that failed. He, didn't, he ate a lot of bad stuff, but he just had some bad teeth as well. The third time we were able to fix him up, we got some, before he passed away, we were able to get some implants on his upper arch and got him some teeth. And at least I, I, I'm happy knowing that he died with a decent set of teeth in his mouth and that he could smile because he loved to smile and he loved to engage with people. And uh, this is something that's real. And it's something that even when I remember as a kid, I remember how much pain he was in after he had a root canal. I'd never seen my dad cry before. And he was in my, in my room crying because the pain was so intense. And it really struck me. And it gave me the sense of, you know, I don't want patients to have this. I want people to, to be able to live. We all have enough problems in life. Our teeth shouldn't be one of them. I want you to be able to live, comfort, and eat comfortably, and smile. It's a wonderful thing. Now, we have about a minute left. Uh, but I want you to give a recap of if somebody is headed to dentures, that means you can't save their teeth. 
or the denture crowd. When they go into your office, what are their options when it comes to mini implants? We can get you a full set of teeth that lock into the mini dental implants that you take out just at nighttime to clean around the implants. Okay. Our other option is teeth that lock, a full set of teeth that lock in place that you don't take out. And they're just, th th these are permanent teeth? They are permanent teeth. How do they clean them? They, they, they come back in for checkups, things like that? We, we, give, we, give those we give all those patients a water pick. You use your water pick to clean around the, the teeth. And we recommend that they come in still two times a year for us to do a, a regular maintenance type of appointment on them. The second option is this zirconium bridge. It's a wonderful thing. It's just like having your own natural teeth. It is locked in place. You can brush them. You can fl a water pick around there. And you don't have much more maintenance to do after that. You're back in the system. You come in two times a year for your regular cleaning. Patients love it. They can eat whatever they want. They can eat whatever they do want. Do they ever tell you eating stories? Uh, well, they, they tell them all the time. I can chew a carrot. For the first time, I bit into a carrot. I can chew steak. Remember how, 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 how you know, just think how, how good that is for the first time trying to chew it, bite into a steak, the juicy steak. What about nuts and like popcorn or chewy things like pizza? Popcorn, nuts, sandwiches. So they're not just not Hamburger. Restricted. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, good. So you're going to wipe out no more dentures in Seattle? We're going we're gonna to do our part to wipe out dentures in Seattle. Non-judgmental, as you say. You're we known have, for we that. Have, we have a non-judgmental approach. Yes, we and do. And people travel to see you? I see patients that, like I say, 90 minutes. I saw a patient from Portland uh, last year. People will travel for something they want. This is something that's affordable, and it's something that everybody should have. And we should mention insurance, Medicare, Medicaid does not cover this. They don't cover it, but we have plenty of finance. We have three financing options. We'll do our best. Kara in our office is someone who will work as hard as she can to help you get these teeth that you want. If you want something, we can find a way for you to pay for now, it. Now, is that common? People finance these procedures. That's uh, that's common. That's like every day. Every, doing every day. We have even no interest financing. We have lots of different options for patients. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff, Randy. It's been a pleasure. And, and, and if they go to see you, is there a free consultation? Free consultation. We'll take X-rays. We'll 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 I'll spend time with you talking about what's important to you, what you want, and give you the options that we have. And what I would recommend for you to get your mouth healthy, to begin smiling, to start chewing, to start assimilating your food, start getting healthy again. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.